You're now listening to the Win or Lose Sports Show. Talking sports, hip-hop to pop culture. Available on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and wherever podcasts are heard. It's kickoff time. It's Dolph Shades. It's Dolph Shades. Oh, and then his picture's in black and white. So. <laughs> the white profile is crazy. Yeah. There's no way you lead at all. You should never ever tell your kids no in regards to, hey, mom, can you take me to the basketball court? Hey, mom, can you get me to practice? Some parents will say, no, we can't do that. I'm not going over. That's too far. Right. But no, it's not too far for your kid. I want to welcome everybody to the show. This is the Winner Lose Sports Show. I want to welcome Mr. Andre McCullum. I, I've been knowing Andre since he was like, a kid kid so uh our families went to church together so i've been knowing him for a while but kind of introduce yourself uh let people know what you're doing um uh, uh in toledo and uh stuff you've done in the past as far as uh work yeah um <clears throat> just to introduce myself my name is andre mccullum i'm born and raised uh on the south side inner city of toledo ohio I um, went to Stewart Elementary, went to Jones Junior High, uh, went, graduated from Libby High School, and uh, I jumped off the porch at a young age, got involved in gangs and, and street life, and uh, I got into some trouble as a young kid, and the guy had another plan. And, um, you know, I bring this stuff up because the way that I speak and communicate now, you would never, you would never know that I kind of grew up and I had that background. Um, but when I had my son at 19, it just completely changed my life. I had an overwhelming feeling on the inside to provide and I ended up getting into the insurance industry and um, doing really big things. Um, by the time I was 22, I was making six figures in the industry. Uh, I had just cracked six figures actually. So it was low six figures. Uh, I made 116,000. By the time I was 25, I was I was working 30 hours a week, averaging over 300,000 a year. And uh, once I got 27, uh, my first year, 27 was the first year I made over a million dollars in a year. And um, it wasn't just the money, though. It was me surrounding myself around great people, me learning, me putting God first. Um, I'd get no credit to myself. All of this was God's doing. God had a plan. And um, whatever he's doing uh, is working because I found myself back in Toledo after moving uh, seven years ago to Missouri and then Virginia. Now I'm back in Toledo, Ohio, and I have a boxing summer program for kids where we work on their mental health. We show kids how to handle situations. We show them how to deal with peer pressure and bullying. And most importantly, we teach them how to defend themselves and build confidence through boxing and fitness. So God is God and right now. I heard people say life is life. Right, so I right. say God is, God is doing what he does. And I'm just so excited to see how the future and what the future holds because I'm 33. And I've accomplished so much and done so much, but we still got so much more life ahead of us. So just excited to see how God moves. So talk a little bit about the uh, the boxing gym. So you have experience in boxing. I know this for a fact, but I want you to tell the audience like your experience with boxing and how that came about. Yeah, so uh, I started boxing uh, when I turned 15. I actually got into a street fight with a guy and we were playing basketball. I, I, mm -hmm. I thought I was going to the NBA. So first, my first love was basketball. And I ended up getting into a street fight with a guy and, and um, and in the fight, it, it went in my favor. Let's just say that. And <laughs> uh, and the gentleman's mother told the coaches I was a troublemaker. Uh, pretty much, I jumped on her son. And after that day, the coaches didn't want. They didn't let me play basketball. They told me I was a troublemaker. I couldn't be on the team. And um, I remember walking home that day from tryouts because they didn't let me try out. And I walked home that day and I seen kids jogging around the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what is y'all doing? Why y'all running? Like, what, 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 what sport is this? And they told me boxing. That next day, I took me and like seven or eight of the guys down there, and we all just started boxing. And um, I ended up staying the longest. I ended up taking it the most serious. So I started training with Coach Derry Riley, who is now the head coach of um, Jared Anderson. Coach okay. Derry Riley was my head coach. And um, then I started working with Andy Bell, which is the head coach of Albert Prince Bell. Okay. Um, number two, uh, number two um, ranked WBO in the WBO uh, in the world. And then after I started working with Andy, I spent some time with Tojo, which is Pretty Boy Bam Bam's father. Mm -hmm. So I was training with I was training with Tojo, Coach Tojo, when Bam was three years old. He was three, four years old. He used to be trying to run and follow me. So 
I got deep, deep history in boxing. I learned from the best. And once my son was born, I knew, I said, this kid is going to box. So um, just to make a long story short, we transitioned into the sport of boxing. My son been ranked number one in the country for USA Boxing since he was eight wow. years old. And now I just feel blessed that I'm able to work with other kids in the community so they could potentially do the same thing. Right. So how did the gym come about when you moved back to Toledo? What is, how did the gym idea come about? As soon as I moved back to Toledo, my goal was to open up another insurance agency. So okay. that, that's, that's what I was thinking. I'm going, I'm going to open up another agency. And then um, um, someone called me and said, hey, Andre, how would you feel about opening up a boxing gym, um, starting a gym and having something mixed in with mental health for young children so we can start working with the youth's mental health now when they're young? I said, I would, I would love to do it. I got a passion for kids. Mm -hmm. I said, the only thing is I have to find a gym. Um, so I made a couple phone calls and they said it was one gym that was available. They had no coaches that was in it on a daily basis. I reached out to the owner. I told him this is something I was serious about. He looked at me. He said, as long as you can be here daily and we can run it, you can have it. I said, wow. sign me up. And, I, I, and I've had the gym ever since. Wow. That's a blessing for real. That's a blessing. Yeah. Uh, so th that was actually uh, my next question is the impact like what do you believe the impact of the gym what you're doing with mental health what's the impact that you uh, want to have on, on the youth uh, through boxing well first off these kids now have daily access to someone like myself an entrepreneur um uh, a businessman, a go-getter, mm -hmm. um, somebody different from what most kids are used to seeing on a daily basis in the inner city. Right. Um, so they're able to come in. I'm able to communicate with them. I'm able to talk to them about life, how to handle things a certain type of way. And really, that's all we do in the gym 24-7. You got this kid arguing with this kid. Hold on. You guys both come here. What happened? Let me tell you how you should view this. Y'all shake hands. Let's do this. We family here. So basically, I just get a chance now to work with the young kids and show them basically what they should expect in life uh, so that they can learn how to handle life and make life a little bit easier for these kids. So I think that's the biggest impact is just having that one on one time. If you could spend two hours a day with somebody five mm -hmm. days out the week, that's huge. Right, right, right. Uh, one of my questions was uh, about fostering uh like team chemistry among because boxing is is not a necessarily a team sport as most people think right so how do you foster teamwork or come out uh you know uh camaraderie camarader com camaraderie with between box boxers when they're fighting each other well, it's not a team sport when you're in the ring fighting yourself, but in, in practice, it's a team sport right. because we're doing everything together. So you got captains. Um, we may have a group of 10 fighters uh, from ages 10 and up over here. Another group of 10 from fighters 14 and up over here. And literally, they do everything together. Mm -hmm. So they're working, whether it's throwing a jab and then rocking over. They learn how to, how to display defense. They learn how to display offense. Also, if somebody messes up, Let's say we doing a drill and somebody mess up and they do it wrong. If the kids laugh in the gym, I'm like, oh, push ups. Nobody laugh at each other. Right. right. So we literally teaching them what camaraderie means and we're building a culture. There's a saying, you don't get the culture that you want. You get the culture that you create. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, if you got kids joking around and you allow that stuff to happen, you basically promoting it. So we create that culture. We create that camaraderie. And believe it or not, it's actually like a team sport when you're in the gym. Right. So along with camaraderie, there's also competitiveness, which is high. Yeah. In in combat sports. Yeah. How do you handle the pressure of the competitiveness between you or between the boxers in the ring? We embrace it. We embrace it. If I see a guy that's super competitive, I get the rest of the guys. I'm like, look, look at him. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. Look at him. Look at him right now. Look at his mindset. Look at his focus. When I see kids in the gym that's progressing and they're doing better, I pull them to the side. I say, hey, man, I saw you. I, you was focused today. Right. And they smile. They blush a little bit. I said, no, man, I mean it. That's good. So basically, you breed competitiveness by showing people what competitiveness look like. When Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant got on a team, it made everybody better. Right. Either you got with it or you had to go. Yep. You get so, left behind. 
you or you get left behind. So all it takes is that one fighter. I can bring my son in and I can say, all right, team, I want you guys to watch Nino today. He's sparring some kids from uh, another state. They've come in town and they're going to be sparring. I want you guys to all get around the ring and watch Nino. And what happens is when they watch his competitiveness, they watch if he get hit, he come back with four or five punches. They go, that's how I'm supposed to do it. So mm -hmm. basically, it's just seeing it. It's just seeing it. Right. And uh, you have a unique way of, of teaching uh, or teaching the sport of boxing. Yeah. How, does that, how does that come into play uh, when you have uh, guys who come to your gym and they just want to fight? I just want to put up my hands. I want to fight somebody. How do you how do you deal with that? With your 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 unique way of teaching and others who just want to come in and box. See, that's where the discipline comes in and the ability to take instruction. Mm -hmm. You can't come in this gym and just want to fight. You don't call the shots, young man. Right, right. So we need to teach you the basics because it's not about just fighting. It's about learning a craft and a sport that's called boxing. So I know you tough. I know you fight on the streets. I know you put the gloves on in your neighborhood and you beat everybody up. But there are kids in this gym or young men or young women in this gym that's been fighting since they was four years old and now they're 17, 18. I need to get you prepared for them. Right. So that's that's when that learning how to take instruction comes in because trust me, yeah, those kids, they want to come in, they're ready to go. Um, but they don't run the shots and you got to let them know right then and there that it's a gym, there's a culture and there's rules and you got to follow those rules. Okay. I'm a parent, right? And I bring my yep. kid in and I'm saying, okay, my kid is about to be the best boxer in the world. So I want you to train him, Andre, but I want yep. you to train him the way that Floyd fights. You know, I want you to train him to be as good as Floyd or as, as good as, 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 uh, 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 Pacquiao. How, what advice do you give parents when they want to bring their kid into the gym and say, hey, make them the best? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's things that we can show them that Floyd does and Pacquiao does, but we need to train the kid based off the kid's individual attributes. Mm -hmm. So this kid may not have fast hands, but he may be a heavy puncher. Right. So we may not want to give him more of a Floyd style. Um in order to have a Floyd style, you got to have cat-like reflexes and great agility and great speed. Mm -hmm. Every kid don't have that. Right. So you got to train that kid maybe to have more of a Tyson type style, right. more of a George Foreman, more of a J Joe Frazier. So it just depends on who that kid is and what, they, what they're good at. That's what you try. There's no cookie cutter approach. There is no, all right, my son is ranked number one in the country, so I'm going to teach everybody to be like my son. No, it's bring your kids in. And we're going to pay attention to what they're good at. And mm -hmm. that's what we're going to work with them on. And can you discuss the, the relationship that you have, uh, not just with the kids, but with the parents uh, of the kids that come into your program? Oh, yeah. It's very important to have that relationship with the parents because it takes a village. It takes a community to raise these kids. So I need the parents to back everything that I say. And I need to be able to back what the parents are saying to make sure that the kids are listening. Um, I may have a kid in my gym that may not want to listen to me. He may want to argue with another kid. If I tell that kid, hey, slow down, we can't have you arguing. And he look at me and say, man, I ain't got to listen to you. Right. I need that parent to back me and say, no, you do need to listen to him because he got your best interest. Exactly. And if I can get the parents, if I can build a relationship with the parents, they'll trust me. And if they can trust me, then I can get the kids to trust me. It's, it's a hierarchy effect. Yeah. Yeah. What do you what do you think the, the, the result is? Or what do you believe the result is from not just making or uh, creating a, a, a dynamic uh, boxer? But as far as the mental health aspect, how do you tie in or how do you believe that that'll tie in with the, the development of the kids? Well, what we do is in the beginning of the day, before we do any boxing, we talk to the kids. Uh, about mental health. Uh, we may have certain um, exercises, um, certain things that we do. We may have the kids write down um, a challenge that they was that they that they faced this week or a challenge that they faced today. Uh, we have we have them write down how they feel currently, and then we discuss. We talk about those things. So if there's a challenge that that individual went through, we discuss how to overcome that challenge or how to look at that challenge. 
after we do that, then we get into the boxing. So we just don't want kids to be to know how to fight without knowing how to think. Right. And I don't mean know how to think in a ring. I mean know how to think in life. Critical um, thinking. Yep. Critical thinking. There's so many children that had great talent. They end up in prison. They end up in jail. They end up dead. But they had great talent. Mm -hmm. But they just didn't make the right decisions. So my goal, and I don't care if it's just one kid, my goal is to teach kids how to survive childhood. That's my goal, and that's our goal at Toledo Art. My staff, we take pride in that. Let's teach these children how to survive childhood. So what's the name of the gym? The name of the gym is called YBE Boxing, but the name of our program is Toledo Art. Okay. Um, we talk about the, the you know, you coming up, uh, you know, starting boxing at 15, and now you're raising your son as a box boxer how do you look at the the landscape of boxing in toledo uh from jared anderson uh robert easter albert bell a few others uh antoine uh, jones so it's a lot of major pro boxers coming out of toledo toledo used to be a basketball a city yeah where did this come from and how is how is the landscape shaping for future uh, box, boxers in Toledo? Well, Toledo was always a boxing city, um, but it was a basketball city for sure, especially when I was growing up. Like I told you, I wanted, I thought I was going to the NBA. Right. So it's definitely basketball. I did, I did too. <laughs> really? <laughs> I did so, too until I hurt my knee, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Ohio has always been a boxing state, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we had great coaches, and those great coaches, Derry Riley, uh, Andy Bell, um, you know, Tojo, uh, Roderick, um, uh, Mike Smith from the Toledo Titans. Man, I can go on and on. There's literally so many great coaches. Uh, mm -hmm. Bill, you know, Griff, Coach Griff, um, Coach Wilcox from the PAL. Man, there's so many coaches and they're all just coming to my head. But um, it started with them. It started with them making uh, sacrifices and dedicating their lives to boxing. And then boom, here go the, the Alberts, the Robert Easters. Speaking of great coaches, Robert Easter Sr. Right. Uh, but the Robert Easters, uh, the the Tyler McCrary's, the Sonny Fredericksons, the the Will, the Wesley Tuckers, the Paul Parkers, the DeAndre Wares. It's so many Man. people to name. It's yeah. amateurs that accomplish so much that that you may not even know. They just right. never turn pro. They didn't yeah. decide to turn pro. And now you got this new this new coaching from myself, a national recognized coach. Um, mm -hmm. Peanut, uh, Rob Mufford, Rob Mufford Jr., yep. uh, Lamar, Lamar Wright. Um, so you got all these young coaches now that's stepping up, and we're in our 30s, some 40s, uh, and now we're taking over. So the future has never been brighter in Toledo because you got guys that's hungry to win. Um, that that's 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 in the forefront of boxing right now, um, and because of it, oh. You got Ota Jones and his sister, yeah. uh, OJ. Yeah. So it's just so much talent. It's so much talent that I'm forgetting names. That's a good problem. It That's is. a great problem. It is. And I think we need to, I mean, there there are highlights, uh, uh, you know, that we do highlight our boxers, our fighters in Toledo. But I think there should be a national spotlight on what's going on in, in Toledo. Because there's so much talent as far as fighters coming out to the male, and not just Toledo around Toledo. There's a yeah. we have an Olympic gold medalist, a uh, boxing medalist in Toledo. I mean, in, in Ohio, a female who's a world uh, champion in Ohio. People don't yeah. know who she is. A lot of people don't know who she is, but uh, people, boxing fans know who she is. But I think yeah. there should be a national spotlight on what's going on in Toledo, not just uh, fighters, but the program behind building these kids up into great men or great women along with being fighters yeah yeah and that that medalist is O'Shea Jones but um you know there, there's a national spotlight on the amateur boxers um Toledo actually has the Toledo is the number one has the number one amateur team in all of USA boxing they have more wins than any other team in USA wow. boxing um, um USA boxing is actually in Toledo right now hosting a women's national championship, which has never happened before. Wow. Yeah, so the spotlight is coming. 
but mm-hmm. you're exactly right. And we're actually in the talks right now of doing a banquet of our own because we're only going to get the spotlight if we shine we on demand, ourselves. Yep. That we turn on ourselves. We have to demand it. We have mm-hmm. to do it. So I spoke to a lot of the coaches and I told them, let's let's run a hall. Let's get these kids trophies. Let's get them plaques. Let's get them belts. Let's let's cater food. Let's bring out their parents. Let's show um, the kids that we care about them and we recognize what they're doing. But most importantly, let's show the parents that their children are actually accomplishing great things out here. Because a lot of the parents don't really know what their kids are accomplishing. Right. Um, so if a parent wants to bring their kid to the gym, how do they reach you? Uh, contact information? Yeah, just bring them straight to the gym. Our address is 316 Facet facet street um it's uh, on the east side of toledo 43605 so facet and oak um bring them straight to the gym let them know that uh, you're here to meet with coach andre and we'll get the kids paperwork filled out and uh, we'll start we'll start letting them train and is there anything that you would like the listeners to know about uh you uh know about uh the gym and the program that you that you run yeah, um, I just want everybody that's listening to know that I came back to Toledo in March a few months ago and um, I wanted to make an impact. And it's something that I think was built on a, on, on that was that was created by God that's inside of me. Um, we created uh, the program is called Toledo Ark. It's basically just like Noah's Ark. Mm-hmm. Um, I was listening to a sermon from T.D. Jakes and he was talking about how God was upset with mankind because of um, the, the bad things that we were doing back in the day. Um, he was upset. Um, he was disgusted almost. Right. So he decided to flood the earth. But before he decided to do that, he came to Noah and he found grace in Noah. And he allowed Noah to build that ark with his family. Um, and he protected everybody that was in that ark. And when I was just listening to that, to that, to that sermon, I said, I want to protect the people in my city. Yep. And we found the Toledo Ark. So just know that we're putting God first. This is not just a program where kids are going to run around and and um, and not be guided the right way. We're mm-hmm. doing things the right way. And um, as long as we stay on God's path and we listen to God's words, great things can happen. All right. Now we got the important stuff out the way. We have a fight this weekend. Yeah. So you got Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford. Uh, this is the fight that we've all been waiting on for our as long as they've been professional, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to ask you who you think is going to win the fight, but who has the advantage here? Because when you look at both of these fighters, they're both, they both have a special uh, skill set, right? But sometimes they have the same, uh, they have a different uh, uh, fighting style, but they have a unique skill set each. Who do you see has the advantage of this fight tomorrow? Let me tell you who I know is going to win. I already know who you know is going to win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, but no, all jokes aside, let me tell you something. A few weeks ago, I had Errol Spence winning this fight. And let me tell you why. A few weeks ago, I, I realized that Errol Spence is very technical. He's almost as close to perfect as possible. Mm. His distance is great. He knows exactly how to touch you without getting touched back. Uh, He can come forward. He can go backwards. Man, the guy is almost as close to possible, as close to perfect as possible. If on a scale of one through 10, but 10 being perfect, I would say Errol Spence is like a 9.7. Do you hear what I'm saying? Like he is so close to perfect. So I said Errol Spence is probably going to win this fight. Okay. That was a few weeks ago. Mm. That's what I did was, my my thoughts have changed. Let me tell you what I did. I went back and I started watching their old fights. I went back. I watched when Errol Spence fought Kale Brook and when Errol Spence fought Sean Porter. Okay. Then I went back and watched when Terrence Crawford fought Sean Porter and when he fought Kale Brook. And what I realized from watching that Errol Spence is a fighter that's been built from the ground up. His coach, Derek James, Mm -hmm. could teach someone else how to fight just like Errol Spence. Uh, He can. Okay. Terrence Crawford is special. There would never be another Terrence Crawford. 
there is no coach that can teach what Terrence Crawford does. Which is what? Adapting to each fighter that he fights? Which is turned from southpaw to orthodox. Yep, he can which, is throw, which is throw punches from this angle, from this angle. His his distance, his timing, his IQ. That's something that that's something that God put in him. And that's yep. something that he that he learned on his own. My coach told me a long time ago, he said, the kids are gonna learn more than you can ever teach them. They will learn more than you can ever teach them. And and I've realized Terrence Crawford is a perfect example of that. Nobody could teach, nobody can build another Terrence Crawford. Yeah. What I believe is gonna happen is uh Aero Spence, I'm putting it on record. Right now, here's what's gonna happen. The first couple rounds, Aero Spence is gonna win the rounds. He's gonna back Terrence Crawford up and he's gonna land good shots. He's gonna land shots that's so good that Terrence Crawford is gonna smile and say, You got me. You got me. Right. About the fifth, sixth round, Terrence Crawford is going to decide to fight and he's going to decide to stop backing up. The moment he does that, he's gonna hit Errol Spence on the top of the head and he's gonna clip him and he's gonna not he's gonna drop Errol Spence. Oh wow. Remember I said this. Oh, he goes okay. drop him. And if he can if he can finish him, if he can finish him when he gets up, he'll win the entire fight by stopping. Remember wow. I said this. Okay, we, this is on record. It's on record. <laughs> this is on, this is on record. You saying yes. Crawford is going to win by stoppage? Yes. And, and, I, and not my my thoughts were to pick Crawford because of how he adapts to each fighter. Like I've never seen anybody do this before. He adapts his his fighting style to who he's fighting against. Yeah. Like you, you'll never see the. You might see the same Terrence Crawford in the early rounds, but you'll never see the same. Terrence Crawford through the whole fight. You'll never see the same Terrence Crawford through the whole fight. Yeah. So it's hard for, for boxers to to figure him out. And guess but, what? Because once they do... And what? guess what? That's what all the greats do. If you think about all the greats, they adapt, they adapt. Floyd mm. Mayweather, adapt. Yep. You can come forward, you can go backwards. You can be a puncher, you can have speed. He's going to adapt to you, he's going to figure you out. Sugar Ray Leonard, adapt. Yep. These guys adapted, man. They figured out what your best attribute was. They take it away from you. That's what makes you great. Mm -hmm. If you go in with the same game plan against everybody, eventually oh, yeah. you are going to fall short. Yep. Can't have the same game plan. You got to be able to adapt. I agree. I agree. Um, next question is, who do you believe is currently the best heavyweight? I got two more questions after this. Oh, uh, I would say right as of right now, the best heavyweight is Tyson Fury. Okay. Tyson Fury. He and with, with Tyson Fury beating uh, uh, Wilder, uh, do you think this is, I think this should happen. Anthony Joshua, Anthony Joshua to me, just, just on record is not a great fighter. He's a champion, but he's not a great fighter. Uh, do you think Fury should fight Joshua. Um, I would love to see it because it's boxing. Yeah, uh, he doesn't have to fight Joshua. Right. His 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 legacy won't be defined because he didn't fight Joshua. Exactly. But it's uh, a money fight, and it's, yeah. it's it's a fight for me to grab popcorn and throw throw some brats on the grill and watch right. my family. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um. Next question. Who do you believe? Is the greatest heavyweight of all time? Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and say Muhammad Ali. Okay. Muhammad Ali, greatest heavyweight of all time. Second best. I'm gonna go Larry Holmes. Oh wow! Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go Larry Holmes. I love Larry Holmes. Who's the greatest pound for pound boxer of all time? Floyd Mayweather Jr. All right. That's all I want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Floyd uh, Mayweather Jr. Yeah. So he, he's one of my personal favorites. Floyd, Tyson, and Ali. Um, I like Fury. I like Fury uh, because not just because he's a boxer, but because he's an entertainer. And that's what that's what that's what sports is now. It's more yeah. of entertainment along with the sport and I, he brings that and i appreciate yep. it about him a lot yep. of us don't know how to do that 
uh, Wilder tries to do that, but I think he needs to go back to the drawing board with his his footwork, first of all. Second of all, he needs to learn how to become a boxer and not a fighter. Yeah. Uh, it takes years. Yeah, years. And he started at what? 22? As, as years. A like, yeah. It's, 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 it's almost impossible once they get to that point that they've been they've learned boxing for 10 years and they've never learned how to do something in particular right like there's things that i'm working with my son on right now that i've been working with him since he was nine and he's just now figuring it out like he's just now doing it to the point that i'm like yes you did it and i've been teaching him since he was nine and yeah. he's 15 now so when i say it take years i mean it take years sometimes three four five years for a guy to pick up on something and keep doing it and do you think he can he can at his age now what is he 28 years old now oh uh, can he, yeah i think he may be older than that he in his older? 30s okay okay yeah. well older uh it's hard to adjust to make that adjustment as a boxer when you're in your older years because most of these boxers do this as a kid and it's muscle memory at this point yeah yeah so do you think he can make that adjustment or make that change in his fighting style if he really wants it bad enough, he can. If he really wants it bad enough. If he sits at home at night and he can't sleep because he can, he can remember getting knocked out and getting beat by Tyson Fury, he can go into the gym and he can work on it. The problem with adults, when they start boxing as adults, you second guess everything. Yep. When you're a kid, you don't second guess nothing. I tell my son to do something or I tell one of the kids at the gym, they just do it. You tell an adult to do it, they start second guessing, well, if I do that, I might get hit. I do this i'm like no you see you, you're thinking about it too much yeah so it, it can be done what will have to happen is he'll have to get with a great coach that can teach boxing and then he'll have to start sparring with great fighters that's coming forward that's aggressive and deontay wilder will have to show his coach that i can box these guys if he can box top level guys in sparring mm. he'll be able to transition over to a fight if you can do it in sparring against top level guys he'll be able to do it in a fight right I agree. Last question. We got to go. We run out of time. Okay. Uh, last question is, what is your favorite uh, boxing movie? Oh, uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go throwback because um, maybe you've watched it. You know, we're around the same age or you're a little bit older, but we come from the same um, yeah. generation. Mm -hmm. um, Gladiator. OK. But Cuba Gooden Jr. Yeah, I like it. Now, you remember when, that? Yeah, I remember it. Not one of my favorites, but uh, I like it though. Yeah, I, I can I can go cliche and I can say Rocky. I can say Creed. I'm gonna go back to Gladiator. I love that. I love that movie when I was a kid, and I just yeah. actually showed it to my son a few weeks ago. It's hard for me to pick. I wouldn't say one of the Rocky movies, uh, no. just because when you go back and look at the Rocky movies, like that's that's not that's not reality. That's yeah, <laughs> that's not real, man. Come on, yeah. Like yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't take that in consideration when Apollo Creed can't see out of his eyes and they're he's getting beat up and oh, Rocky can't see out of his eyes and he's getting beat up. The referee's not even looking to stop the fight and it's like, oh my god, this it's way too, way too much. Yeah, but when you think about it, it's, it's a boxing movie and if you think about it, none of the boxing movies are real then. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Especially <laughs> yeah. now with, with Creed, yeah, the new Creed yeah. movies, they're about yeah. the same same type of movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Hurricane, uh, because I think because it was uh, the story, yeah, made it one of my favorites. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah, you can't go wrong with no boxing movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love them. So yeah. yeah. Uh, I appreciate you uh, taking your time out your day to to do the show with me. Uh, we have to do more stuff later. I want to talk to you about some other stuff uh, with your boxing uh, program outside of this. Uh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll give you a call. I, I actually, I'll inbox you my number, and uh, we we'll, we can get that uh, get that going. So, like I said, uh, I appreciate you. How can people find you on social media or your gym on social media? How they, how can they contact you? Yeah, I'm on Facebook under Andre McCullum, uh, Instagram under Relapse underscore Workaholic. Uh, say it one more time: Relapse underscore Workaholic. Um, and as far as the boxing gym on Instagram under Toledo Art Four One Nine. All right. Uh, that's Andre McCullum. We appreciate everybody watching and listening to the show. Remember to subscribe, uh, like and subscribe on YouTube and follow us on all socials at Win or Lose Show and uh, download on Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio, anywhere you find your podcast. Thanks for listening.